Please note that this video has spoilers for the subject. Put off by how long this video is, don't worry, I tend to jam-pack my videos with as much content, as many details as I possibly can, and I try to talk pretty fast, so while the video is a bit on the long side, I don't repeat myself, and I get into a lot of details about the subject that, you know, pretty much anything that I feel I can comment on and that I think you might find interesting. Ninja Assassin Movie Thoughts I suppose I will start with some of the more interesting visuals. I really loved how near the end you had, you know, you have this big fight between Ozuru and Reizo, and that's kind of what it's really been building up to, you know. Ever since you found out that he betrayed the clan, and that that's why they're chasing him, and that Azura is still alive, because you don't see him die on the rooftop, he just slashes the eye, you know. You just, you know there's gonna be a showdown between the two, and it's gonna be so freaking awesome, because Ozuro was the guy who knew all this stuff, he was the one who taught all of these, you know, pupils, most of whom actually seem pretty inept at throwing shuriken and surviving against a fellow ninja when it really comes down to it. But hey, you know, against regular people, they are, you know, awesome. I love how the, what, what is his name, Takeshi, just keeps saying, now it's just you and me, and then, you know, five ninjas attack Reizo, and Reizo gets away before Takeshi attacks him. Anyway, but yeah, you have this big conflict between them, and you just know, you know, Uzuru knows stuff that Reizo doesn't know. I especially love the the filming of the bit where it's just, it's like a sword fight between the two. And you see it from, like, through this screen, you know, this kind of, I'm just going to go with Asian because I, I am not good with, yeah, anyway, you just, you have that screen and you can see, like, their shadows sort of through the screen. And with every couple of swipes of the sword, you see another, you know, mess of blood splatter up on the screen. That was really cool, you know. It just, that's how you keep a movie that has almost constant fighting interesting. You know, you suddenly pull something like that, you know. And because it's not, in that sequence, it's not vital for us to know exactly what's going on. What it communicates to us is he's getting his ass kicked. He's, he is going to die if, you know, if the situation doesn't change, you know, and that's, yeah, it's done really well. And, you know, then the fight, I do, I would say that I, I like that he can disappear into the shadow and then reappear. At first, I like it, but once it, I don't know, at first they're covering it with camera angles and editing, where it's just like he suddenly just disappears. But suddenly it's like a visual effect, where it's like he can just swoosh past, and you know, and then Rezo starts doing it, and then I like it even less. At, at that point it just doesn't really feel... I mean, it's not that any of the movie is realistic, of course not, but... I don't know, at that point it just felt like suddenly we were in a comic book, and... I don't know, up to that point, it didn't quite feel like, you know, the, like, I don't know, maybe they have, their their weapons are of superhuman sharpness, you know, or the, you know, human body in this world is really, really fragile. And, like, the amount of beating they can take, or at least Razo can take, is superhuman, but other than that, it... I don't know, it just doesn't feel like they are beyond human, you know. They are they are great humans, they are <laughs> great specimens, but, and really well trained, but that's about it. I don't know, you know, maybe I'm, you know, in the minority on that. Anyway, more on Takeshi. I didn't realize for a while, I didn't quite put together, but I do suppose that he was the one who captured... Kiriko, I'm terrible with names, the girl, you know, and then he kills her, but that's really just following, you know, 
the orders of Us Usuru, something like that. And, I don't know, it just, I don't really see that as this big, you know, epic showdown. I, d I don't, I didn't really feel like it properly built up the animosity between the two, because again, he was just following orders. If it had been some other student who had been asked to do that, he would have done the same. It's not like he volunteered to kill her. That I would get, you know. I don't know, maybe the fact that he was the one to capture her was supposed to like symbolize he was the embodiment, he was the perfect student, he was the star pupil, and Uzuru really, you know, kind of lives on in him, I don't know, something like that. I can, I suppose I can see, but yeah, I just don't, it didn't seem like there was that much of a proper established conflict between the two. I also have no idea why would, why Takeshi would particularly have a problem with Reizo, you know. Yeah, again, I totally get it when it's Azuru, because that is the, you know, it is his life's work, it is the, you know... Razor was his student, and he disobeyed him and humiliated him, and so you know, in front of the rest of the, you know, ninja students. In fact, so yeah, I like how when you first, you know, at first you don't know exactly what Razor's deal is. It falls into place over the course of the film, and especially around the halfway point is when you get some really vital clues, but. When you, you know, when the phone goes off and he, you know, picks up the, you know, he gets the assignment and you see, oh, it's her name. You think he's there to kill her. You know, you don't know at first that there are two ninjas in that room. You know, it's, it's pretty obvious with the, you know, oh, the light went out, you know. I guess it's just a coincidence. You know, she knows that there's going to be a ninja up there. I don't know why she actually goes up there, but anyway... The movie needs her to, you know, and the sword is nearly killing her, and then there's a chain that stops it, you know, at that point, because you've already seen him use the chain, I mean, you've already seen, you've seen him with swords as well, but you have, you know, the, the chain you connect with Rezo, so at that point, you know, even before the unmasking, he, you know, it's, it's clear to the audience, he's the good guy. You know, and then you gradually find out he betrayed the clan, you know, and is, you know... In fact, Uzuru really needs to stop having the women that Reizo cares about killed, because it just turns him into a more kick-ass fighter. I mean, he takes out, I don't know how many ninjas on, you know, on the roof of that building, and he kills Uzuru there at the end, after he thinks that, you know, Mika is dead. I did kind of see it coming. Once she had been stabbed, because it was so specific, because it was the heart, I thought, her heart's on the, the other side. I bet. Just like the key maker there at the beginning of the film. You know. Yeah, that totally is him. Reynolds or Kim, or however you pronounce that. I'm, I'm almost certain that that's the key maker. I love how the movie starts like any ninja movie should, by the way, by a guy getting a tattoo. You know, it's, hey, if that doesn't scream ninja, I don't know what does. But yeah, so, you know, then you, you get some more flashbacks and you realize exactly what happened. You know, you had already gotten maybe some of the groundwork, but, you know, you could maybe just be thinking that, ah, he is going to betray them. Like, Mika is going to be the one who opens his eyes to the error of the clan's ways. But no, he has already betrayed them, you know. I thought that that worked well, and the movie did kind of need to hold out on that revelation because, again, half the movie is over by the time we get to that because at that point, what do you do then? You know, then the next thing he is, you know, trying to flee with her and then, you know, how is it? They, you know, he gets tricked by the, you know, because we need him captured. He wouldn't make that mistake by himself, and we need to show off the awesome ninjas. So he gets captured because Ryan, you know. I like that Ryan then turns out to have been playing the, the, the people who wanted him to cooperate, you know. And that then, you know, you have this... You know, and then you have the scene of, you know, Rezo is in this, 
you know, prison, and you just know they're gonna come get him. Actually, at first I thought that he was gonna make an escape, and that would be really badass, but then, you know, well, he, he has some really badass fighting, at least. You know, and that, hey, it gives Mika some purpose in the movie, because really she is just there to be the straight man to the, you know, this ninja world, so that he has someone to explain things to, and, you know, she's a proxy for the audience, really, and so that, yeah, in, in that way that she can help Rezo, you know, she, she motivates him there at the end by almost dying, and she gets him freed. So, hey, couldn't have done the movie without her, not entirely at least. I love that Rezo opens his eyes, you know, that is just such unadulterated badassery, and so beyond anything that makes sense, that he actually hears that and, like, opens his eyes and stares at the camera with the guy, and he's like, he couldn't have heard that. Could he? That, that's just awesome. I quite like the backstory with, you know, Rezo and the girl, I, Miss K, you know, Special K, the, the, uh, yeah, with the power of heart, you know, it almost gets to be, I mean, it does maybe have that sort of Wachowski bad dialogue kind of thing to it, you know, with the, oh, everything has a heart, you have a heart, listen, our hearts are, you know, I, mean, I, I don't blame, you know, Rezo for going along with it, I, you know, she looks hot enough, I wouldn't mind some ear boob myself, and, you know, and then later she has, you know, and she also has him just kind of, you know, straight grope, you know, oh, just put your hand there, you know. Anyway, I thought it worked. I thought that, you know, we did get to care about their relationship with one another and sort of, you know, once she is dead, the, you know, because you have several scenes just establishing, you know, she is the one who cares, you know. She, had, obviously, when you train a bunch of people from child excuse me, from childhood to be killers, there's going to be some who don't take to, excuse me, and she was very much one of those, you know, she would not cut that other student that she downed, you know, and so she got cut back in return, and she makes a run for it, it, you know, she gets captured, because she, you know, she would get captured, because she wasn't a ruthless enough student, you know, if Rezo had tried to escape, he might have gotten away, because it was the better ninja, but with her, you know, if she doesn't have the ruthlessness to be a ninja, she doesn't have a ruthlessness to escape from ninjas either. And, you know, so you have this sort of, and, yeah, it's, it's pretty cliche and such, but I genuinely do think that the moment there at the end with, you know, at first he's just talking about it in the battle, and then a little bit later you actually see it, you know, with the bit of the first breath I take after killing you will be the first breath of my life, and then he takes it, and, you know, he has climbed the wall that she climbed to escape, you know, you have that sort of symbolism. I think it works, I gotta say. I really like the scene with the, you know, at, at the, I don't know, highway? Yeah, the, the busy street, you know, and how one of them actually is downed by a freaking car, you know, it is kind of obvious, but you had to do that, you, you just, once you have that scene, you know, I, I can, I can just imagine, like, a draft, you know, come back with, like, red, you know, paragraph saying, insert death by car. You know, some ninja needs to get run over by a car. Yeah, you gotta love that, too, how they're, you know, oh, devoted to secrecy and must never reveal our identity. You know, and then suddenly they're just running across the street, you know. I don't know, I guess they don't think that the Germans will be trusted, maybe, or something. But, yeah, a ton of civilians actually saw them and they left dead bodies behind. Actually, in general, in the movie, they don't tend to be that subtle about their existence, really. I don't know, do they clean up after themselves? We don't really see it, but I guess in that first scene, afterwards, maybe he just, you know, washed away the blood and cleared away the bodies, because if not, is yeah, okay, I'm sorry, this was a ninja. You know, that or predators came back to the planet. Ow! It's gotta be one or the other. This is not something that normal people could have done, you know, so, yeah.
And by the way, I like how a couple of scenes make sense once you realize the nature of Raizo, that he is fighting the clan that raised him, you know. He was there to protect that Russian guy, you know, because you just see that, you know, oh, he met with this young man, and just, you know, you don't know exactly what's going on with that, but then, you know, yeah. And I like the bit with, you know, oh, he, you know, how did he die? The lights went out, you know, just... And by the way, with the lights, I love that they actually literally point big lights at him when Rezo is, you know, captured down there in the basement, you know. Like it's his friggin' like like he's a vampire and that's gonna like take his like, like it's Samson and just cut his hair off or something. That's just awesome. Because, you know, he gets his power from there being shadows, you know. That is just brilliant. Anyway, the scene that reminded me of aliens that I mentioned in the review that, you know, they, they're they standing there talking about, you know, oh, they're going to come for Razor. Well, they're not here now, are they? You know, they're, they're going to be here soon. How soon? And then the lights just go out, you know. It's just, I literally thought of, like, I, I always get their names mixed up. Hudson or Hicks. I think it's Hudson with, you know, how, how did they cut the power? They're animals, man! You know, just perfect, you know, and then you just have them going around and suddenly you just see the ninjas above them and they just start slashing up everybody. And I love how, you know, a couple of them actually do get shot just with bullets and they're like hurling shuriken at Ryan and at Rezo and they're just, you know, they literally should tag them several times in the back, but nope, nothing happens, you know, nothing of the sort. I love the I suppose you could call it a twist. It, it, it surprised me with the tracker, you know. At first you just think that she's calling them to the apartment there and she doesn't expect, you know, him to be taken. But no, what she was actually saying is, I hope, you know, with I hope you forgive me, is she made him swallow it and, you know, was, or put it in his mouth. I don't know exactly. You know, he was able to spit it back out. So, you know, and... She intentionally turned her back to him because she knew that, you know, I guess they were just hoping that he wouldn't be killed, but that he would be brought back to the clan. But, yeah, you know, and then suddenly just armored cars burst through the door and, you know, shoot up the place. And, yeah, that's just awesome. It be, you know, and he spits out the, the tracking device and then you just instantly figure out, you know, it's that good kind of twist where... The moment that it's revealed, something just makes sense, you know, and then you get how it, you know, how it keeps moving. Because, you know, that was the best way to get at the clan. Let him be taken back to the clan and let that take them, take them to the clan, you know. And, yeah, it's not entirely original, not at all, but it worked, you know. I suppose that more or less covers the movie... I find it somewhat funny that the movie is, you know, wants so badly to fit in so much action that there are actually action sequences, which are basically just him training. You know, he's just fighting the air or hurling shuriken without being able to see. And, you know, it's just, he's just showing off, you know, basically for the audience. You know, it just, it wasn't really necessary to put in there, but... They wanted to put awesome ninja action on the, you know, on the screen, and so they just pretty much put every, you know, iteration of such that they could think of, every, you know, version of such that they could think of in there, you know, that, but yeah, I suppose that's everything I have to say. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.